Cool. Are we ready? Yeah, whenever you are. Oh, okay. Hey everybody, it's Eric from Barrel and Hatchet and Roy's on the camera right now, but we want to say thank you again for watching another HatchetCast episode. Today we're going to be talking about helmets specifically, doing kind of a breakdown as well as the different types and what we got that Roy and I use uh, and kind of talk about the reasons why behind those helmets. But before we get started, hit the like and subscribe button. It really does help us out. Also support us through coming and training, training with us. We love having you guys out training with us. Make sure you also go and hit the notification bell so that way you get updates about any new episode that drops. It's really been helping a lot of people out. Remember kind of like that we have episodes, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Um, so how else can they support us? Uh, so yeah, you can also pick up some gear. Uh, we do have ghosts on order. We have map pouches on order. We are having a lot of extra stuff that we're going to start adding to the site. So make sure you go check out the website and also sign up for classes on our website as well. Um, we have a bunch of discount codes for our affiliates that are in the description below. So make sure you guys go check that out, save some money. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just jump right into the, the helmet thing. Um, so the biggest question we get a lot is, helmets in terms of like what should I buy most of the time it's usually like revolve around night vision which were supported and uh, sponsored by advanced night vision so uh, advanced night vision actually uh, gives us all the rental equipment that we need to be able to run night vision classes and so uh, whenever we get questions about helmets it's usually revolving around night vision helmets are one of those things where it's super expensive um, and you really want to make sure that you build like you buy quality uh, when it comes to your helmet. I'm of the, I advocate for a, a ballistic helmet as far as a helmet is concerned, and we can kind of jump into that about what you want to be looking for when it comes to a ballistic helmet. Um, but we'll start off with a bump helmet. So what is a bump helmet? I almost knocked that over. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so a bump helmet is literally just a plastic helmet. There's two different uh, materials that they have. They have usually carbon fiber, which I think OpsCore actually discontinued that carbon fiber line. Uh, or they have just straight up plastic. So this is pretty much just a bicycle helmet. It's extremely lightweight. Um, and a lot of night vision guys who are just getting into the game usually will buy a plastic bump helmet. Um, now a bump helmet is really good honestly for one purpose, holding your night vision on your head. It's lightweight. Uh, and also for the military specifically, it's good for like if I'm riding in like a Polaris or an off-road vehicle or if I'm doing jump operations, or I'm doing water, water jumps and stuff like that. That's when bump helmets really come into play. So like when we're diving, if I'm diving a wreck, I actually will run my bump helmet if we're wreck diving. You know, we do scuba diving here in Florida, so uh, I'll wear a bump helmet to kind of protect, protect my head. Um, but as far as that's concerned, that's pretty much all it does. Uh, Roy, you actually have yours where you have like the, the ear pro attached to yours, right? Yeah, so I have some ear pro attached to that bump helmet. I have an additional bump helmet that's just basically slick, but, uh, but there are a set of old uh, Peltors that are rocking on that one. So Yeah, and you've got the... This, was, a, this yeah. was my first helmet. So uh, this Team Windy. And you got this when you bought your night vision, right? Yep, correct. Yeah, so... Usually this is a very popular one. Um, something about the Team Wendy that I actually really like, their retention system is something that you definitely want to pay attention to. You have the, what's this called? It's like a click liner, right? Yeah, it's like a ratcheting system. Yeah, so you can actually click that in and then tighten it up, almost like a construction helmet. Uh, a lot of these head harnesses now have like this type of head harness system where you can actually, if you can actually see right here, when you tighten this, it actually tightens tightens that down. If I pull on this 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 dial, it loosens it all up. So that is, I think, very, very good. I think it's almost superior to the dial liner that's on the uh, Ops Core or the old Ops Core. Uh, you also have the Team Wendy Epic Pads. How have those been in terms of comfort? I'm gonna tell you, it's very comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, the Team Wendy, if you're looking to just get into a helmet without breaking the bank, that's gonna be super comfortable. The Team Wendy has been absolutely fantastic. Uh, I, I like everything about it. Uh, the only thing that was probably a little disappointing when I first got it was is, is how the availability of the different types of uh, uh, ways of attaching your ears right if you chose to do so yeah so, but there's more stuff available now 
would you have like when you bought this i think it was the issue with the ear pro where yeah. you had to buy an adapter yeah i had to buy an adapter so. yeah so this is the OpsCore uh, Arca rail adapter for their uh, for the uh, Peltors. Um, on my, uh, I don't think we actually have a helmet here, but uh, traditionally the OpsCore rail system works with the OpsCore ear. Uh, this old school, actually that's not OpsCore, that's 3M. Excuse me, that's the Peltor uh, helmet adapter for the Peltor uh, ear protection. Um, if you buy a knockoff helmet, most of the time these things will be out of spec or they won't be very durable. So getting an actual OpsCore rail mount is going to work better with the 3M interface as well as if you get OpsCore arc or the uh, mounts for those uh, ears, it's going to be a lot better. So you don't really want to skimp on these. These are very, very ruggedized and they're built to a certain specification. Um, but if you look at this one, this is the OpsCore dial. And it's actually kind of a pain because you you can only you can't actually access it with two fingers when you have it on you have to use like one hand and it's kind of annoying uh, but it has the same type system where I have to dial this in and then I have to undial it to loosen it whereas the Team Wendy I can pull on that that knob and it loosens up right away a little faster way of getting out oh a hundred percent dude a hundred percent so when it comes to the OpsCore uh, and even the Team Wendy the OpsCore specifically you can get these from Parachuter Gear these are actually called Nod Locks and they uh, are a retention system for your night vision. So I have them on all of uh, the OpsCore helmets, have them here on this ballistic helmet as well. And that's another way of retention to retain your night vision because uh, the OpsCore bungee system, it's actually was used mostly for like skydiving and jump operations where it would retain the night vision to your helmet without having any slop or slack. Um, but as far as retaining it, it's okay, but it's not like super secure. <laughs> So you want to have a very good retention system. They've actually changed these out now. Uh, Team Wendy has used to have, I think they have some. On yours, you actually don't have them on there. I think you use this system uh, where you can retain your night vision that way, which is another great way to have it. Um, but yeah, if you also look on my ops core, as far as my, or my bump helmet is concerned, the one reason I don't like the, the, this ops core bump is this is an actual molded shroud. Um, so this is actually plastic. And we've actually had in the past, at least you know at my, at my squadron, this plastic lip has actually broken. So okay, wow. having, you wanna have metal on metal. Yeah. So this, this is the Wilcox shroud and that's metal. And on that plastic, as soon as it hits, you crack this off, you can't use it for night vision anymore. So it's pretty much just a bicycle helmet at that yep. point. Um, whereas the Team Wendy, you actually have, yes, it's molded plastic, but the insert inside is actually aluminum. So you have metal on metal, and that's what you want for durability. Um, they are vented, you know, so you have a lot more breathability when it comes to a bump helmet, um, which is, is honestly really nice, especially in Florida. It gets super hot. Yep. Let's see here. Um, and the next thing I think you want to look for that's important, at least for us, is going to be your comfort level making sure that you have a helmet that is extremely comfortable. Uh, I know that's been a big point of contention with a lot of other manufacturers is they have a, a padding system that's not very comfortable. It has a lot of hot spots. A lot of hot spots, dude. Yeah, you dude. can start to feel it. Have you ever had where you're wearing a helmet and it's just like, yep, dude, I mean, you start getting a migraine, it's absolutely miserable, and you're not really thinking about the training or what you're doing. You're just thinking about when can I take this thinking thing off? Yeah, we did a USPSA, right? USPSA? That correct yeah yeah yeah, yeah exactly. a competition shoot <laughs> competition yeah. style shoot under under nods just the other night yeah uh, i had my helmet on the entire time yeah. my, my team windy ball and you know the, the padding on the inside of it is unbelievably comfortable yeah so. it, it's super nice you you have to you have to find good padding yeah where some of the lesser inexpensive or even sometimes even the expensive i, I don't personally care for the ops core padding that much yeah, yeah the old school me, padding was terrible yeah it's uh yeah. it uh it's yeah, but they're definitely better now. Yeah, this is actually what the old school pad looked like on the Ops Core. It was this old styrofoam looking thing and you have it on the sides. This is their updated padding that I actually took from another helmet and stuck it inside of this, this bump helmet here. Um, so make sure also you get it sized. Most helmet companies will have the sizing chart so actually, like take I like take a tape measure and measure my head. It's probably the probably the most important thing. It is, dude. Yeah. Otherwise, you get a helmet and they're like, this is too small, or well, it's too big. I mean, big. at the end of the day, when it comes to ballistic or even bumps, if you yeah. take a bump helmet that's too loose, any kind of helmet, your bicycle helmets, your motorcycle helmets, you, ideally you don't want the helmet to move. If you take right. a hard enough bump to your head, yeah, 
you we, have that you have that space in between. I mean, you did so, motocross for yeah. a while, so how mm -hmm. important was that fitment, oh, especially? Yeah. It, it, fitment was in, incredibly important. Yeah, I mean, uh, very very important. It, like I said, if your head has the ability to move inside the helmet, mm -hmm. if you take a hard enough bump, yeah, you're going to feel more of that shock to your brain. So right. you have a, you have a more likely chance of getting a concussion. So. Well, it could be a life and death type thing. Yeah, and at the end of the day, that's what a, that's what a bump helmet is designed to do. Right. Moving around in and out of vehicles, you yeah. know, doing doing a lot of work like that. Like you said, mm -hmm. diving inside of inside of wrecks. Yeah. You, know, you take a hard enough bump because and your helmet's not fitting you properly. Yeah. You're going to take more of that shock to your brain. We've also been doing a lot more urban repelling, and mm -hmm. that is key. Having a good bump helmet, right. uh, just to kind of protect us from that. This is an. <laughs> This is a special helmet special. Uh, for special people. No, this is a one of my <laughs> old bump helmets from the military, and this is actually a uh, Protec PT Alpha Bravo helmet, and it's a old school bump helmet. I actually cut the ears because it was like a mid cut, so I actually cut the ears on this to fit my ear pro. It has a Picatinny rail section on the side, which is cool because if you want to add lights, you can actually add a Surefire light or a Streamlight to your helmet. And I actually replaced the padding and the the uh, the chin strap with ops core and an old school ACH type of padding. Okay. Um, the the chin strap is actually an ops core chin strap. And I actually like, look, you can see I like modified it with like Velcro and stuff like that. It is old school, man. You can see it's all rusted from all my sweat. But um, this was a, I think it was like 70 bucks, dude. It was okay. super cheap. Super affordable. Very affordable. I have an old Narotos, uh, mount that I screwed in there and actually now you can actually get them where they pre-drill the holes for you or you can do it yourself um, but it was uh, it's the old school cool the old school GWAT vibe but a uh, great helmet used it for a ton of stuff uh, and it's a very very cheap and affordable option I think your ops core bump helmets and your team Wendy's are gonna run you what would you pay for yours I don't even remember yeah. like 300 yeah, bucks we'll have to research it <laughs> yeah so it was like two three hundred bucks for for these for these types of bump helmets, uh, when you can get a very affordable option, especially if you're just doing it just to hold your night vision on, um, this is a very good option to have. Um, now, as far as ballistic helmets, the Team Wendy, Ops Corps, um, Bush, I think is run by Safari Land, they have it, uh, Hard Headed Veterans. There's a lot of companies out there that make good ballistic, or make ballistic helmets. There are some companies that it's very questionable where they get their sources from. So there's a lot of ballistic helmets that are actually made in China. They might say assembled in the U.S. or whatever, or you know assembled in Europe, but it's actually a Chinese Kevlar helmet or a Chinese ballistic helmet. There's two different types of... The Chinese are definitely out to kill us. <laughs> yeah, dude, they want you to get their helmets yeah. that they make. Uh, so you want to make sure that like Ops Corps and Team Wendy are two verified helmet sources. Um, Bush is also a, uh, a U.S. company. Um, I think there's another one, I can't remember the name of it, but is also another, MTech is another uh, uh, U.S. manufacturer. So when it comes to helmets, you know, I haven't done my research on those other ones, but you want to make sure that you find a verifiable, verifiable source as far as where it's manufactured, not just assembled. Um, when it comes to bump or when to Kevlar helmets, you got it, is, is a lot of give and take. So you have a heavier helmet, which is usually made out of complete Kevlar, and then you have a lighter helmet, which is mostly made out of polyurethane, um, par, excuse me, polyethylene. Polyethylene is like the new hotness right now. It's, it's extremely lightweight. Um, and the problem is, is right now actually uh, oxide, black oxide, he just did a ballistic test on the Team Wendy, which is like a, it's an expensive helmet. Their ballistic helmet is almost all polyethylene. It's extremely lightweight, but it was after one round, it should stop. Uh, pistol ammunition and fragmentation. Um, so if it's not stopping those, then you have a problem. Uh, the, the Team Wendy helmet, you can actually go refer to those, but the FBI actually just dropped Team Wendy and is going back to a uh, heavier Kevlar helmet because the cavitation, meaning when I shoot this with a nine mil, if it cavitates, it's gonna kill me, right? So it not only needs to be a helmet where it doesn't actually penetrate it needs to prevent cavitation and not penetrate when it comes to the standard pistol calibers um, so make sure that you get a solid helmet and, and honestly sometimes it's just like you might have to just carry the weight you know there's some where the, cutting the weight's good but everything has a, a give and take um, this is the older style ops core so it's a, a hybrid between carbon fiber polyethylene and kevlar um, the newer ops cores are also almost all polyethylene so is the new Army combat helmet is all polyethylene and they're having some really bad really? issues with cavitation.
So you would say, I mean, right now without with, without extensive research, because th those helmets haven't been out for a while, you're mm. probably just better off just picking up a Kevlar helmet, right? Yeah, and actually, um, Ben from Wiseman Company, mm -hmm. he, I actually referred him to get the old Gentex ACH uh, gunfighter cut, which is a mid cut. Mm -hmm. This is a high cut helmet, you know, so the old Army ACH helmet was more, it had full ears. Um, Gentex, which also owns Ops Corps, um, they still make uh, Army combat helmet, ke all Kevlar helmets, and it's a little bit heavier, but I mean, uh, those Kevlar helmets like Bush, they just had a test on theirs. It was 14 rounds of 9 mil in the same spot oh, wow. before it penetrated. No cavitation. It was incredibly strong. Um, so it might be just, if you're going to buy a ballistic helmet, which I think if you're wearing body armor, you should have a ballistic helmet. You know what I'm saying? Um, I see a lot of guys wearing Kevlar or, you know, body armor and then running a bump. It doesn't really make sense. Would so, you recommend just going ahead and buying a ballistic first before you even bought a bump? It depends. It, sometimes it's hard, you know, because yeah. like you buy night vision, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And then it's just like, well, I want to wear it. Sometimes it's, it's just a little bit easier in the pocketbook to be able to get just a bump helmet it's to get you going. easier pill to swallow. Yes. But I would, if you're wearing night vision, I highly, highly recommend a, a ballistic helmet and those those gentex ach kevlar helmets that you can get them for like 500 bucks mm -hmm. like a high cut gentex ach so it's not an ops core but it's the same company and it's all kevlar you have the ballistic protection that you want um and it's going to be a little bit easier to pill to swallow than like an ops core or a team wendy where it's 16 1700 um so as far as where you want to focus a lot of those tests is you want to focus on the edge so if you have a helmet test that you're looking at for a specific brand Anytime that they sh they're going to usually shoot at the edges, and that's where you're usually going to have those failures is on the edge of the helmets. A good helmet will still hold up with penetration and cavitation on the edges or around the holes. Um, so, you know, you want to make sure that you get a good quality ballistic helmet and you don't have to break the bank. You can get a solid old school Kevlar high cut ACH type helmet or a gunfighter cut, which is like not a full high cut, but like halfway, you know, up the ears. Um, and that's going to be nice. Let's talk about accessories real quick. So on this, I have a battery pack to power my night vision. Um, I also have a counterweight, which we actually just take nuts and washers and bolts and just stick them in a, wrap them with duct tape, put uh, uh, Velcro on the back of them. And I just weigh it. Like <laughs> I do a very scientific method. I take my night vision and I take this, a bunch of hardware, like nuts and bolts. And, and I'm like, that's about the same. I wrap it in duct tape. And then I just freaking slap it on the back, and it's a good counterweight. And there's a lot of counterweights that you can just buy over yeah. the market. Back back in the day, we, we would say, like, hey, just build your counterweight a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But uh, with with price of hardware now, yeah. like, uh, so shop around. The, the advantage to building it yourself is a little bit more tunable. It is. And the so. other thing is, uh, if you don't want to use hardware, you can get fishing lead, yeah. like fishing weights. Yeah. Um, what do they call those? Fishing shots? Leads? Lead shot. Lead shot. Yeah, lead you can shot. get those fishing weights. I don't, I don't fish. I don't yeah, know. we know. <laughs> Listen, I throw it in there at 20 seconds in. I'm like, this is dumb. Freaking, uh, but, uh, so yeah, you can build your own, uh, counterweight and you can actually specifically weigh it for yourself. We do run the core survival Hellstar strobes. These are very nice. And so we actually have them on Roy's and my helmet. And what's nice about it is whenever you're turning that thing on, you don't want to have this on when, when you're in like a non-permissive environment, you want to have it on when you want it on. And what's nice about this is it actually has audible clicks. So you can actually you can actually feel and it has those audible clicks and then for IR mode I flip that down so if I wanted to know hey I'm on invisible and then I have different modes that's a lot easier to feel it through a tactile touch versus tur accidentally turning on your IR device and not realizing that it's on so I like the core survival hell stars they're also extremely durable um, the older models didn't have a screw now they have a screw for a battery crap Good thing is it uses a single one, two, three battery, which is usually what most night vision runs off of anyways, unless you're running like a double A. Um, and it, it, it lasts forever. They do have uh, these lanyard holes, so you can actually tie it to your helmet. What I do is because I have this here, I just slap a bungee on there and call it a day. Um, and then I will actually put extra Velcro uh, on my helmet. So I have these attachment points. And all I do is I take the, the hook portion of Velcro and use that to be able to stow my cables. The other thing you can do is you can take sticky Velcro, the hook portion, and just put duct tape on the adhesive portion to be able to make good retainers. You can also use patches uh, that are that are great for uh, retaining your, your cables and cable management. Um, now, when it comes to EarPro, like I said with Roy's, he's running the uh, 3M Peltor 
helmet adapters. I'm running the, uh, I'm actually trying the OpsCore ones. There's, there's pros and cons to both. This has the AXL adapters to be able to run the Peltors. Uh, the, the OpsCore ones, I've actually heard, have had some issues with guys, you know, they're, they're warrantied, but guys are having them as far as reliability. Um, I know like Ranger Battalion and some of the special operations units are using those. We still use Peltors and uh, I just I have a lot of time behind them so I'm, I feel comfortable using that. Um, whenever I'm using these, these OpsCore ones, I actually have to hold these mounts so I look like freaking Mickey Mouse when I don't have them stowed. But then I close them on my ears which is really, really cool. Um, and then I also have a boom mic and this is an old school tr trick, check this out Roy. So this is an old Petzl uh, bite light, but I taped it to my boom mic. So I, now I have a red lens on my boom oh, mic that's cool. and I can actually like use that. That's, I was using it for the night vision match. Okay. Yeah, so I was just using that anytime we need to score targets. But uh, that's an old school trick. You can just tape a bite light to your boom mic. Um, now for this one, what's really cool about the 3M ones is they pop off your ears. And dude, with the ops cords, it's on or it's off. You know what I'm saying? Like, otherwise you look like Mickey Mouse. Uh, with the 3M Peltor uh, helmet mounts, they actually pop off so they can actually hover on your ear. So I'll actually show you kind of what that looks like. Obviously making sure this dial liner's popped out. I need a haircut, Roy. Yeah, you do. Jeez and rice, like, I look like a you're, gypsy. You're, you're two helmet size larger right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I have where if you actually look, the ears are hovering off. I can still hear my communications coming through this headset, but I don't have it where it's super hot. Now, if I want it to put against my ears, I just press, and now they're on my ears, and I actually have some hearing protection. Or I could just pop them off. So now they hover, but I can still have some hearing uh, when it comes to my comms. So those are nice. I can also take these and rotate them out the way if I need to, get them out the way. Um, but they're very robust. And then when I, when I want to stow it, I just pop them in. And that kind of keeps them a little bit safe. For the, uh, for these OpsCore ones, or excuse me, the, uh, yeah, the OpsCore mounts, the one thing that we want to keep a lie up for, so for guys who are running these, is it's plastic on plastic. You always want to try to have a little bit more robust system. Hopefully they make a metal adapter, but I have heard that guys have been popping these off and they've, they've worn out where they don't ever even stay on anymore. So just something to keep an eye on. Um, but for maintaining, here, maintaining your equipment. Maintain your equipment. Just so here, because it's a helmet doesn't mean you shouldn't pay attention to it. See my radar dishes I got yeah. here? So that's how I have to have them stowed. I can rotate them to the back of my helmet, but I don't really like doing that. It wears out the arms and then I will. So there, no, there is no in-between. There is no in-between. Yeah. It's kind of, it's on or it's off. So. Um, I'll actually pop those off and I'll stow them back in. As far as the, the helmet is concerned with my cable, um, on your Peltors or your uh, OpsCore ones, they have a cable that connects the two sides. And so most times I will run mine under the helmet if I'm wearing the OpsCore mount. So I think actually yours. I just got them tucked in the back right now. Yeah, so he has his tucks in the back. One thing you can do is you can actually take this cable that connects the two ears and run it underneath your padding yeah. inside. Uh, either way works, but just make sure you have good cable management, uh, similar to how Roy has his setup or, or her mind set up as well. Um, but overall, it all depends on your budget. As far as the, uh, you know, what you're looking to spend, there's a lot of extra stuff that guys will throw on their helmets. Do what works best for you, kind of what your mission setting is or what your group's going to be doing. Um, we live in daunting times right now. So, you know, having this equipment as, as Americans specifically, it's our right. We should be able to own this stuff. So the best way to be able to get involved is just get the equipment, save up the money to get it, buy quality, your life is worth it. Um, the other thing is you gotta wear it, dude. Like, yep. I mean, we got a ton of guys we train with, they wear this stuff all the time and it's great. Yeah, they wear it, they wear it during day shoots and everything. Yep. They'll just toss it on yep. just so they can kind of get, uh, kind of get accustomed to it. Correct, yeah. Comfortable with it. And one of the things is when you throw on a helmet, it also affects how you shoulder the rifle and aiming and your natural yep. point of aim. So um, you got to train with it and see what works best uh, or what needs to be taken off, what needs to be moved. You know, is my counterweight not heavy enough where it's super front heavy or is it perfectly balanced when I have night vision on that it actually keeps it where my, it doesn't feel as heavy. If you have a good counterweight system and it's balanced, it almost, you can have a super heavy helmet and it almost feels like nothing. Um, real quick on this liner, this is the new Ops Core corkscrew liner and this is a much better system. I can actually get it with one hand and loosen or tighten it. 
uh, which is very ideal. Um, but yeah, man, like, you have any other pointers on the helmets there, Roy? No, I mean, at the end of the day, just like what we said a minute ago, uh, you got to get out, you got to train with it. I uh, highly recommend just layering things. Yeah. If, if your fundamental skills are not there yet, you know, uh, and you haven't even been able to achieve a natural point of aim without yeah. gear on, yeah. adding gear to it is a whole nother layer. Yeah. So um, buy it, train with it, learn how to use it, yeah. but understand that it's definitely going to, you're going to, there's going to be some training curve, right. a massive training curve. Yeah. Definitely get the skills first, develop the fundamentals, be sound with your equipment, then slowly add in those implements. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, if you haven't already, thanks for for checking out this video make sure you go hit the subscribe and like button also go check us out on instagram we'll have the barrel and hatchet instagram page as well as tyler roy and i we also have a personal barrel and hatch, hatchet handle send us a message comment below what helmet that you like to run you know share your knowledge in the in the comment section it really does help out the community for you guys to drop your knowledge in there and just talk about your experiences with helmets um, check us out on spotify we did just put up a new hatchet cast episode on spotify as well as um on Twitter, we're trying to get, or X, we're trying to get more involved on that. So, um, yeah, come out and train with us. Make sure that you guys also go out and train on your own. Make sure you're the asset, not the liability, and we'll see you on the next one.